At six foot nine, Magic Johnson was built like a power forward, but revolutionized the game as a point guard with his dazzling passing skills and playmaking ability. He was a three-time league MVP and a winner of five championships. His Lakers were known as Showtime, and Magic was the conductor. On the eve of his very first game, I would not impose upon any rookie in all of professional sports to talk to you. But I want you to know that this man has a smile that lights up a television screen from here to Bangor, Maine. Showtime was born when he arrived. Personality off the scale, energetic, 24-7. Magic is straight down the middle. Still going, still going. Oh! Highlights filled. Showtime. Oh, you gotta love it. Oh. How did he sing? I always say that if I had to pick a team, he's my first pick because I know he's going to make whoever else I pick way better than they than they are. When you walk out of the locker room, here's this guy that's like, you know, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's get it on, let's do this, let's do this, let's do that. So all of a sudden you got this college atmosphere with the Lakers because Magic brought all of that fear. He came in, man, he's pushing that ball up the floor, and we were like, we gotta run. <laughs> and if you didn't look up, and he was like, look up, Wood, I was like, hey! And the ball was right there. When I went to the Great Western Forum, then watch Magic come down and do his thing, you know, and orchestrate his team and make them understand this way, this, this we gonna run this. And I mean, I was in awe, you know, and, and Don Nelson, he had to call the timeout, had to take me out the game because he's like, I hope you're not going all and watching him and not really playing. I wanted to tell him, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I mean, I need to sit down for a minute because why? Wow, it took me a half just to realize that I'm, I'm, I'm playing against Magic. The one thing I think Magic brought that Laker team is that he was a leader. After a while, you didn't look at his age because you looked at his basketball IQ. And it was as high as any coach that ever played this game and some of the best with Jerry West and Bill Russell, just to name a few. His basketball height, this guy's 19 years old. So we knew he was special and it was gonna be a lot of fun. And boy, it was, a, it was almost like, <laughs> Going on a Beagle tour or, or a Rolling Stones tour. It was a tour, man. It was a ride, and we all enjoyed it. I remember one time coming into the, the huddle, and I played against Magic a number of times, and, and Dennis Johnson always uh, defended Irving and walked up to me and goes, man, is that guy strong or what? <laughs> I said, I know he's, he don't look very strong, but he's pretty strong. And he goes, Jesus, he said, some of the things that he does out here, he said, there's no way I can stop him. He said, but don't you ever tell him. <laughs> Magic Johnson changed so much about the NBA, uh, starting with his position. Oscar Robertson had been a big point guard before him, but not a supersized point guard at 6'9". Yeah. As a normal-sized point guard, <laughs> what kind of a challenge did he pose? We, as we had no shot. I, I mean, really, he was. Um, he he had the athleticism, he had the smarts, but then he had the fifth passing lane. So as a normal-sized point guard, right? You know, there's there's only four passing lanes. There's you know, one here, one there, here, and there. Magic had a fifth passing lane that was right over your head because no matter how tall you were trying to be, he was looking down over you and saying, hey, James, I think you're open. Hey, hey, you know, so he can just pick you apart. And, and he did. And every time you made a mistake defensively, I mean, Matt, every single time you made a mistake defensively, he made you pay for it. Definitely the smartest player, you know, at the point guard position that I ever played against. Uh, he read the defense no to clock. I mean, just just brilliant, just brilliant. You know, because of his charisma, I think his competitiveness maybe gets lost on some fans. Even now, I'll hear these legendary stories about pickup games in which Magic <laughs> Johnson refused to lose yeah. under any circumstances. How great a competitor was he? He, 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 was, he was a great competitor, but he was extremely gracious. And uh, I, I was so fortunate to come in under his tutelage and had had Magic Johnson not, you know, taken us in, he, uh, me and Aguirre, who knows what type of players our rookie seasons would have been. 
Uh, he was generous with his time, generous with his knowledge. And you got to remember, Matt, he was on top of the league. He was the MVP of the NBA Finals, you know, and we're getting to run around with him and just see how he treats people, how he's interacting, uh, how he's playing, how he's practicing, how he's working out, you know, that competitiveness with us uh, while we're playing and competing. He's still trying to win. We're like, dude, you just won it. You, you just... You was the NBA Finals MVP. Can we can we can we win the free throw contest? He wanted to beat you at everything. And that that rubbed off on all of us and it made us better players. And in 1980, uh, we went right to the finals. And so we're playing in the pivotal series against the Philadelphia 76ers, and we're in game five uh, at the forum. And in the third quarter, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar sprains his ankle, severely sprains his ankle, and has to be sort of carried, not carried off the court, but really helped off the court to get to the locker room. You see magic, and you can see concern in his face. And so we went on uh, to play that third quarter, and then when Kareem came back onto the court in, in the fourth quarter, uh, it was magic and Kareem that teamed up for the winning basket to win game five. But after the game, we found out that Kareem was finished probably for the series. And we had to go back to Philadelphia uh, to play game six. There were actually players uh, that had approached me as the assistant coach at the time because Paul Westhead was the head coach and said, you know what? You should keep Magic home and keep Nixon home and keep Silk home and just take the other guys back. We're gonna get killed in Philadelphia anyhow and then we'll try to win it at home in game seven. And Urban found out about this kind of talk, and he said, what, what, are you, what are you guys talking about? What are you afraid of? You kidding me? I said, he said, the next game that we're going to play is a game we can win a championship. Uh, we're going to defer that game and, because we don't think we can go in Philadelphia and win without Kareem? Oh, he was beside himself. And I remember everybody getting on the plane and going back to Philly and then going to a walkthrough our final walkthrough before we played game six, and Paul Westhead put him at the center spot. And I remember when we got on the plane to go back to Philadelphia. Kareem used to sit in first class in seat 1A. That was his seat. Nobody else ever sat in seat 1A. It was an aisle seat. Gave him more leg room. And as soon as Urban got on the plane, he sat right in 1A. <laughs> He said, you guys don't think we can win without Kareem? Well, I'm going to take his spot. I'm going to sit in 1A. And then when we lined up for the center jump in game six, Magic went in and jumped center against Caldwell Jones. A young man by the name of Magic Johnson is going to start at center. Then after that game, 42 points you know, and 15 rebounds across the masthead of the Los Angeles Times, it simply said, it's Magic. <laughs>